What's up, everyone? Welcome to Level 7. It is time for another episode of the Agents of Fandom podcast. I'm your host, TJ Zwarich, joined, as always, by my co-host and good buddy, Adam Blevins, this time to talk about his favorite superhero comics book type project. It's time, Adam, Deadpool, and Wolverine. We've gotten our first trailer, and it's time to break it down. How you doing? I'm doing great. I always feel anytime we do these double header podcast episodes, I always feel like I'm just caught in like I'm vortex because for listeners, when they'll be they'll be listening to these at entirely different times. But when you're saying how are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing about the same as I was like an hour ago when you asked me that. But usually that's the case, but I am actually much somehow much more excited, even though I, I adore Avatar the Last Airbender. Deadpool, like you said, is just one of my favorite things on the entire planet. So this trailer has given me life. I like being completely serious. I've probably watched it 50 times, maybe a few more. Um, I, I watched it right before this episode I, or before we did the Avatar episode. I watched it between episodes. I just uh, I cannot wait. You, the breakdown you could. I got so much. Uh, I just I'm just too excited. You got so we can get to it. I'm so excited. I'm excited because you have theories. Usually I'm the one who has to carry the theory side of things, but you got theories for this trailer and I'm looking forward to letting you cook and dive in. And uh, for those who don't know, like Adam said, we have not one but two Aiden's Fandom podcast episodes coming this week. We uh, have, of course, right now our Deadpool and Wolverine trailer breakdown. And then later this week on Thursday, we will be dropping our Avatar The Last Airbender primer. And since it's uh, Avatar The Last Airbender primer week, we had to bring in the Adam's the Deadpool expert. But this guy knows a little bit about Deadpool comics as well. And he is the Avatar The Last Airbender uh, expert host of the Agents of Adam Comic Corner podcast, Damon Gray. How you doing? I'm doing great. Deadpool is so fun. I am so excited for this movie. There's so many possibilities that this movie can do. The trailer was great. Can't wait to talk about it. And let's dive in. Before we do so, make sure you're following the Agents of Fandom on socials at Agents Fandom on TikTok and Twitter, Agents of Fandom everywhere else. And of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, follow the Agents of Fandom wherever you get your podcasts. And once again, just to like really hammer it home, hit the damn like button. Uh, it helps so much on YouTube to getting us uh, on that front page and uh keeping that podcast cooking on uh on youtube we start the we start the trailer with uh deadpool ryan reynolds wade wilson celebrating his birthday and uh this to me kind of seems like an innocent calm quiet way of starting uh starting it until one thing obviously we know how deadpool 2 ends with him going back in time to save vanessa killing some variants of uh of himself uh from uh the x-men origins uh wolverine movie and things like that but the one thing i noticed is not only was vanessa there not only do we have our guy peter rob delaney not only uh do we have negative negasonic teenage warhead not only do we have Colos colossus and dopinder but there was one person who i i, I originally didn't even realize who it was and that is Shatterstar there too, which to me is actually a very important quick indication that shows not only did we just grab Vanessa and bring her back, this is an entirely new universe because it's a universe where Shatterstar did not to die a very gruesome death. Um, Adam, I know you had some theories with him potentially being in another universe as well. So I want to throw it to you. What do you think about how the trailer started off? And do you think that was actually kind of like a important little nod? Oh yeah. Well, I think everything in this trailer is, is pretty calculated. Is that, and I think that's kind of the case with most Marvel stuff. And just to kind of bookend a lot of this, every single time you say, what did you think about this part? I loved it. So instead of like going into in depth into why I loved it, I'll just talk about some theories because the bit is interesting. I actually rewatched um, the post credit scenes in Deadpool 2 last night because obviously he takes Cable's post credit. He, uh, he takes Cable's post he takes Cable's time travel device and he goes back and you know fixes some pretty crazy mishaps. But yeah, we see half of these characters die in Deadpool 2. So another thing that really throws me off that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about is Vanessa saying, Hey buddy, or she calls him buddy, which is a little strange. Like 
So my and, – and then Cable is pretty much the only person who's a major player in Deadpool 2 that's not here. So I think one of two things is going on, and they're, they're similar. But obviously he took, he took that device and he found himself a universe where everybody, particularly Vanessa, I'm sure was the most important, was still alive. And he either found a universe where Vanessa was alive and Cable was already dead – or he found a universe where Vanessa was alive and just settled for the first one and then went and killed Cable. I have no idea. But that's obviously why the TVA is showing up. I mean, I know everybody like – the, the most like obvious thing is like, oh, well, he, he time traveled at the end. But sure, they could just be there for that. But that's the same thing that everybody has been saying since it was first rumored that, that the TVA was going to be involved in Deadpool 3. Everybody was like, oh, they're just going to show up because they're upset about – so – they know that they listen to the, they like Feige and they've all been open that they follow these things. It's the same reason that we got John Krasinski and multiverse of madness. They, they listen to what the fans are saying that. So there's going to be some kind of twist here to where it's not just like, they don't just show a recap of what happened at the end of Deadpool two. Like we're here for you because of this. So it's something, it's going to be something different for sure. And that seems kind of like the most logical thing. And I could be completely off on that because we also, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. We also have to talk about how there's no Wolverine at all in this trailer, which makes sense considering the movie just wrapped filming about two and a half weeks ago. So they're probably still working on a lot of the editing and, and the CGI and cutting all that stuff together with Wolverine. But it just seems like there's it, it makes almost makes too much sense that he found himself another universe with Vanessa because he didn't just go and bring her back into his universe. Like there, there's no logical reason because if that was the case, he wouldn't have brought back Shatterstar. He wouldn't have brought back. Um, Rob Delaney's character, um, Peter. I, I don't know why I was blanking on that for just a second. Peter. Peter didn't person. die though, right? Peter Peter stayed alive. No, Peter Peter died, but then he saved him. He was one of the people that he saved because Peter was the one that got sucked in through the uh, or uh, through the wood. Oh, chamber, and then right? he saves him when he goes back in time, right? Yeah, right. Because like he, uh, what's his face? The guy that spit the vomit, like was going in, and then Peter got sucked into. Like they both, you know, got got messed up through the uh, through the wood chipper, but. But yeah, so like that just makes me think it has to be it has to be another universe. Otherwise, if, if he just brought Vanessa back, I don't think he would go through the trouble of bringing back somebody like Shatterstar who TJ you didn't even know. So, yeah, there's there's definitely some funky stuff going on here, but I don't think it's as simple as we all thought for, you know, 2 or 3 years, however long it's been since the TVA was rumored that it's just like, "Oh, they're mad at him for going back and and fixing all those things." I think there's going to be a little more to it than that. Damon, what's your take on the situation? Oh man, we're talking about time travel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to get started, but I do think it is interesting that if we do think it's another universe and this device is clearly not just a time travel device, it's clearly much more. If it is a time travel device, then yeah, they're playing with just different set of rules. And if a villain named Paradox is involved with the time paradox, then yeah, we're just probably gonna make fun of that whole concept on its own and just kind of shrug it off potentially. Um, yeah, it's, it's not overly surprising. I don't think since we saw how, the you know the credit sequence of that movie ended and how or just how that movie ended in general with deadpool kind of going back in time changing some things and making sure that the awful version of deadpool never happened or that green lantern never happened and many things never happened so that's great so it's it's a good place to pick up i do think it is interesting adam did say uh vanessa called him buddy I know they they've always kind of had like that like quirky little relationship with each other, so maybe it was kind of poking fun, or maybe you know something happened over the last few years, and Deadpool kind of has to Wade Wilson has to realize what life is again. It's uh, a lot of different potential uh, possibilities there, but I do think that that Shatterstar being there was like a quick little confirmation that this is in fact a different universe. Um, we got a lot of classic Deadpool humor through it. And right at the beginning from the pegging jokes with Disney and all of these different things. Um, but Adam, I want to throw it back to you because Deadpool's your favorite Marvel character. Succession's your favorite TV show. And we're getting Matthew McFadden as a very big part uh, of this uh, of this movie and a big part of the trailer right off the bat. Yeah, before I talk about him, I do want to – I forgot one of the most crucial part. This is more just like a little Easter egg. But, you know, Deadpool's wearing – one of the biggest things in this trailer, he's wearing this, this goofy-ass wig. My guess is whenever he arrived in this universe and maybe – you know, we see that like, in Deadpool 2, Cable's time travel device, he says it only has a certain amount of juice. Like he can go somewhere, but he can't go back. So maybe 
this kind of device is on the fritz. So wherever Wade ended up, my guess is he was somewhere where he had to kill an alternate version of himself, maybe a version that had hair. And then we get to see Wade. I, I'm just thinking about getting to see Wade kill a version of himself and then go shopping for a wig that like, like bringing the guy's head like into a wig shop and be like, do you have anything that could match this? Like there's just so much potential for something really, really funny there. But yeah. Oh, this is like my multiverse of madness. Everybody knows how much I love succession and, and people that know me know that Tom Wamsgans was my favorite character in that show. I think he's one of the best written television show care, like just characters in general, but especially on a TV show ever. And he's also just as funny. He's, he's very different than Deadpool, but the two kind of have similar sense of humors and that people like to pick on them. And then they kind of respond back with, with more like vulnerability, but also like, you know, shots back. So it's the, it was immediately the perfect fit. I was so excited when he was first announced. And I wrote an article about that up on, up on agents of fandom.com. But, and I'm glad they're letting him do his accent to his, his Irish, uh, Scottish, I believe, excuse me. And it's funny in the last season of succession, there was a few times where his accent kind of slipped a little bit, which I think might be why he didn't win the Emmy this year. You know, the accent slipped. That's, that's probably not the case. That's like just the ultimate reach of a, of a theory. But, one of my biggest pet peeves in, in any medium at all, any kind of television, movies, whatever, is like poor accents. So I'm so I love when they let when they bring somebody in and they're like, hey, this is this British guy, but now he's American or the opposite. Like, hey, this guy's Australian, but now we're going to now he's British or, or whatever. So I'm really glad they're they're letting him do his thing. But we just get such a small dose of it in this trailer when people really realize how funny the two of them are together, because we only get to see them together for what, like 15 or 20 seconds of, of real time. That's going to be some of the funniest stuff that we've ever gotten in the MCU because both of their abilities to just kind of bounce and zing like funny one-liners is top tier. And everything that we've gotten in this trailer too, that we get in this trailer, like leads us to believe that the writing in this is going to be great because there's nothing that really throws you off. And we get that hilarious joke, like you said, the pegging joke, which is just classic Deadpool. And I want to say too, there's been a lot of like intolerable discourse just since that trailer dropped about like, well, this is why Deadpool is better than She-Hulk or like this. She-Hulk is fucking awesome, too. And I believe She-Hulk actually did all this stuff before Deadpool. She-Hulk was the original fourth wall breaker. So, like, people fucking lay off of She-Hulk, please. Because she is equally hilarious. And if she was doing a lot of the same stuff that people are praising Deadpool for, like, people would just find a way to complain about it. Like, But that's that's just way aside from the point. I know I'm, I'm just completely vamping right now, which is going to keep happening because of how much I, I just absolutely love this. But he's going to be a great addition to the MC. And I hope, although I... I I hope we get to see more of him, but then like in my logical brain, he's probably a one and done for Deadpool 3. That's actually one of my dream cameos for Deadpool and Wolverine is She-Hulk. Um, have She-Hulk coming in and give us that moment of like Deadpool just saying, isn't it crazy how the incels think it's hilarious when I do this and get pissed off when you do it? Like something like that. We get the, the moment, Damon, when Wade's giving his kind of intro to the MCU. He's saluting the Captain America and we're seeing all of these um, moments from the MCU on the screens, in the TVA. He's calling himself Marvel genius. It's interesting too, because like they're very much framing him as a hero you can maybe they're manipulating them but they're saying like you could be the hero of the marvel universe and that's why he's saying he's going to be marvel jesus what did you think about their brief kind of intro to the marvel cinematic universe for deadpool um is that going to be a big part of this are we going to see multiple not just x-men but Mar like marvel cinematic universe tie-ins or was that just a quick moment in the trailer to show people who didn't know that hey this is in the mcu now no, I hope for people who, if you really liked those flashback scenes in Avengers Endgame, man, this movie is going to be for you because I have a feeling that's going to be a lot of it. I think the most interesting thing about it is this is very clearly like a different branch of the TVA. This is not the TVA we are accustomed to when um, Mobius was kind of in charge. We do know that the during season two of Loki that there was a lot of infighting in the TVA Mobius kind of like went off to just watch himself live a life. So who knows how long that kind of like is going on for. And I would imagine this is kind of like a separate branch of the TVA just because like the outfits that the TVA agents were wearing were different. I mean, I kind of like an absolutely insane theory that I do not think is true at all, but 
I do think Wade here is definitely being manipulated. Absolutely 100%. And if we are doing kind of like a Deadpool kills the Fox universe, like as in a Deadpool kills the Marvel universe comic storyline, Deadpool was being manipulated in that by having him see things a certain way. And in reality, that was not the case. So we could be seeing a little bit of that. I think that's just the most interesting thing. Now, like, I, again, I don't want to go into my absolutely insane theory, but it is cool. He did salute Captain America, which in the comics, like, Deadpool is the best with Captain America. So that's kind of like a, like a funny little nod. I do enjoy that. But we are definitely going to see Deadpool pop up in so many moments throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Fox X-Men Universe. I'd imagine history just popping up everywhere. It's it the jokes right itself where after the salute, Wade just goes, or did we were, did we get Chris Evans for this? Or am I gonna get am I gonna get to see Chris Evans as Captain America after like saluting on him on the screen? And then by the end of the movie, he runs into Chris Evans as the human torch, and he's just like, Fuck! Wrong Chris Evans. Uh it'd be like such a, a perfect little thing that they could do there. Um before I throw it back to Adam, actually, I have a theory. And I want Damon's uh and I want Damon's uh kind of comic backstory because even though we didn't prep anything, I know I can just throw it to you for <laughs> any comic storyline in the history of comics and you'll be able to give me something. All right. Um, let's go. <laughs> and they make a pretty clear um indication based on what he's wearing and how they kind of show his back with his hair. Uh, Adam mentioned we don't get much Wolverine in this trailer. We do Ooh, get match. some Wolverine with patch uh a character that wolverine has embodied in comics as a bar owner and we did get to see uh an easter egg this bar owned by patch in madripoor in falcon and the winter soldier um so my theory is definitely that this will be taking place in madripoor um and i think and that with that being in patch's bar um mm -hmm. but i think there's two ways that this could go one is that could very well just be uh, one of their very first encounters. That's Hugh Jackman. That's a version of, of Wolverine in a Madripoor in a Marvel universe. Or I actually, uh, and Adam, you brought up a great point that like, this is like an end game style trailer where they're just only showing us the beginning. Um, I actually think that could potentially, and that led to all kinds of annoying people being like, Duh! on, uh, on your, on your, on your social media. Hey, Adam, but, did you know a trailer we usually own? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but here's an alternate theory is that maybe that that's not actually from the beginning of the movie what if that's from the end of the movie and that uh that is not or, i'll add a third one in i'll add a third one okay. in. but that could be from the end of the movie and that's actually not hugh jackman and that's going to be marvel the marvel cinematic universe's wolverine who is already in Madripoor as Patch. Um, that's why the bar was there. He is currently existing in the MCU as Patch, and that'll be Marvel's Wolverine. Third, it'll be Wade looking for Hugh Jackman, and it'll be a John Krasinski type of thing, and that'll be either Taron Egerton or Daniel Radcliffe um, as Wolverine, and he's like, what the hell? This isn't the one I'm looking for um and that and it'll just be like a quick uh a quick gag type of thing i think it's going to be one of those three things but damon give us a quick backstory who is patch and would that make sense for him to already be existing in the mcu there uh sure so we do know that there was like kind of a wolverine tease i think in she hulk it was like right underneath the eternals kind of like as a pop-up and i can't remember for the life of me if it said magic or not but if it is that would like really kind of like add up no that uh, was a separate thing about magic okay so that happens but you know it they've kind of already teased that there is a wolverine in uterus and maybe you know blogs and crap all make things up all the time anyway who is patch patch is a persona of wolverine where he is a bar owner and he's that's he's a persona a lot of characters have a lot of different egos in comics. Uh, Hulk has way too many. And Logan has Patch, as well as a few others. Like, he just kind of, like, has a version of himself where he is, like, an animal. And he's just, like, on completely rabid. 
And there you go. So that's Patch. And that's yeah. kind of the various uh, theories that I have in there. Um, but Adam, the fight sequences that we qu- get to briefly see in this trailer are just phenomenal. Like classic Deadpool, the one with him pull, like pulling the mag out of the gun and catching it uh, before he shoots. Just incredible stuff. But we also get like big, quick, quick teases with Eliath? Is that Eliath? Are they in the void? Is that big gas cloud that's scooping people up Eliath? Shout out to Garrett uh, for drafting him in Marvel Madness two years in a row. Did not go very well for him. Um, And then we get Pyro, too, from uh, X2 and X3. I know you got more to say than just uh, how much you love it, but... We, I feel like like we didn't get much in this trailer, and then at the same time, we got so much with them briefly teasing this. Yeah, what well, you know, I didn't even pick up on the. I think like a lot of people, I didn't even pick up on that that was Pyro initially until somebody posted it after because he just looks so much different than he did in those early X Men movies. But the fact that we get something like that in the very first teaser just kind of has to mean that like bigger things are bigger things are coming for this. But to me. You know, so much of of the fighting is going on in a snowy, like it it looks just like the forest at the beginning of Age of Ultron Mm. from Sokovia. And that's like, oh my gosh, I I feel like there's just so, there's endless potential for him to show up. Even if we don't get a lot of these, because I I don't think, I really don't think Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans are going to be filming, filmed any new things for this movie. I'm not expecting them, like, like him to show up in the Age of Ultron, in the forest in Age of Ultron, and Robert Downey Jr. take off his Iron Man helmet and talk to him. Like, I'm not expecting something like that. I don't know if they do it with like some weird editing tricks or how they handle it, but it seems like he is going to – I know he said, like, your little cinematic universe is going to change forever, which is pretty funny because Marvel has, mar- has marketed multiple movies that way. Like, everything is going to change forever. And, like, this is the biggest thing we've ever done. So I hope we get, like, like a couple of jokes um, in there too about that. But – One thing that I I tweeted about this too, um, that I really, oh my gosh, I'm not, I I, somehow we always bring this back to a way for me to just be tortured by secret invasion. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again because I think there's so, there's so much potential for him to do what he did with like the, the Green Lantern thing. And I don't know if Marvel would ever do that because that's a little, a little crazy and them like admitting that that would be them admitting that they made a mistake. And obviously, I'm sure the people at Warner Brothers had no idea that, or who, if it was still Warner Brothers that owned DC at the time when Green Lantern came out. I'm sure there were probably a lot of people that, if they had had the chance to weigh in on that, would not have wanted that to go into the movie. But that's Deadpool, and like we get, there's gonna he he like pushes the boundaries of all these different things. So while I, I turn around and I'm like, oh, there's just no way that like Feige or Disney and Co will let him do that, then I'm also like. We get a pegging joke, like in the in the very first trailer, which is just like for anybody that knows, that's one of the common complaints that people have had, you know, which I think is, is completely bullshit. The whole Disneyified MCU. I mean, Disney's been around in the MCU since phase two. And so like some of the best MCU that we've ever gotten was like a hundred percent ran by Disney. So I've never understood that complaint, the whole Disneyifying things, which also brings me to one more thing that I just want to say that I've noticed the last couple of days that is completely stupid. At the end of this trailer, it pops up and it says, like, Project is not yet rated, which is very standard for the first trailer in a movie. We know this movie's going to be I saw people actually saying, like, wow, Marvel won't even commit to the R rate. I'm like, guys, they, he says fuck in this trailer, and there's blood, like, all over the place on several occasions. I'm like, if you, don't, if you watch the trailer and think there's a chance that this movie is going to be rated PG-13, then, like, Clearly, I'm the one that should be explaining to other people how trailers should work instead of the other way around because this is so obviously going to be rated R. But I've just been going for so long, I don't even remember what you asked me about initially. But, oh, my gosh, just just everything about this trailer is just uh, – uh, this is my whole life for the rest of this year and probably for the rest of my life. Well, and what so many people, I think, don't realize is that all of the this film is not yet rated means is that they haven't sent the fi- sent the final cut to the people who do the ratings yet. That's it. They're just still cutting things up. They haven't set the final cut yet, which we know because we've seen filming pictures uh, as of a, like a couple weeks ago. So um, kind of uh, ridiculous there. But again, that is the Internet for you. Um, for those who don't know, like the little like we we tease like is that Elioth? if it's that's a character from season one of loki in the void he was the big gas dragon uh from the void 
And so those are the kind of two theories that I've seen on that uh, snow, like when they're fighting in the snow uh, situation, is that one that'll either be taking place in the Age of Ultron Sokovia part or in the Void. Um, those, that'll be one of the two places uh, that that's taking place. And another one that I think would be cool kind of theory on top of the if that is Sokovia is it would kind of fit with the trope of me hoping at the end we get the I'm finally going to meet Captain America and then it's Human Torch. Um, if they do a few things like this throughout the movie where it's like, I'm going to save Quicksilver. Quicksilver died for a stupid reason. I'm going to save him so this doesn't happen. And it just sort of all feeds into Gar er, Damon's theory that Time travel isn't real. It's just a multiverse. They're going to different universes, which, yeah, it's true, but they're kind of the same thing. That's science. I would hate to be Damon's science teacher uh, in high school. Um, but if they did that trope where it's like, I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to save Quicksilver, and then he gets there, and it's not Aaron Taylor Johnson, it's Evan Peters. And he's like, what the hell? It's the wrong one again. Um, I thought you were Ralph Boner, like something like that. Uh, um, he's just like getting out trying to stop the camera. Yeah, exactly. Like just all of these things like that throughout. Anytime they've recast, have like uh, make an Edward Norton joke. Make a make a um. Oh geez, how am I forgetting his name right now? The original Rhodey. Um, Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard. <laughs> yeah, Terrence Howard. Make a Terrence Howard joke. All these different things I think would be uh, an interesting way that they could do that. And a quick tease of a we get the uh, a the show is all about giving us the back of people's heads because another person we see the back of their head in this one is Cassandra Nova, which uh, maybe you can elaborate this on Damon, but in comics is uh, a sister, half sister of Charles Xavier, who is uh, supremely powerful. And a lot of rumors I've heard from this one is that Cassandra Nova could be a villain in this one and a variant of Charles Xavier. And that could be potentially who, um deadpool is ultimately hunting through all of this mm, that's possible i have openly said specifically when it comes to x-men comics it's not my forte i've never been a very strong x-men reader um but I, I don't know if you're gonna do if you're gonna bring in a character don't just make him a variant of like professor x just make him cassandra all right but like i said X-Men comics, not my forte. Um, so essentially just think uh, for ease while going into this movie. Evil, extra evil Charles Xavier. Um, and I, I think that's basically what we'll probably be looking at with uh, Cassandra Nova in this situation. Um, but the final closing part of this trailer that we get is a quick look at Wolverine's shadow, the claws, the suits um adam i'd love if you wanted to focus on that part and then damon will throw it to you after for another quick tease of that trailer that we got which is in that exact same scene there's a little torn up secret wars comic right there in that exact no same shot as well um so damon <laughs> or, sorry adam first up uh what did you think of the clothes? Because like you said, we've got very little wolverine here but what all that was was basically give us a yeah the suit is coming that you've all already seen on the internet. Well, before, yeah. <laughs> before we, we talk about Wolverine though, I want to say that one of the people that I think is really noticeable from was rumored to be playing a villain. If I'm not mistaken is Emma Corrin. Um, I don't know if I, if I've just missed her in the 50 plus times that I've viewed this trailer, I didn't see her at all. It really does seem like there's so much they're not showing us, you know, shocker. That's, I guess apparently that's how trailers work is 500 people on the internet have told me in the last 48 <laughs> hours, um, especially teaser trailers. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, like for the, for Wolverine, it's, it's interesting because I didn't even really notice that he, I was so excited watching this the first time that I wasn't even like, like halfway through the trailer. I'm not like, where's Wolverine? And then he shows up and I'm like, Oh, that's right. He's like an equal part of this movie. Now the question that I have for you guys, obviously it's, it's great to see him, but we don't get there's like hardly we get the back of his head for half a second and we get to see the suit that you know we've already seen plenty of times. It would have been kind of cool if they hadn't you know officially released those photos and people would have been waiting to see like oh is this the suit and then we finally get it in that reveal. Obviously that was a big moment a few months ago, but um, my question for you guys about this and and I know Damon's got some some other theory stuff he wants to or TJ you got another question for him, but 
my thought is that there's a chance that this is like the first time that they meet in this movie because wherever the TVA sends Deadpool into this into the void or wherever it is that he's at right here, which looks like the void, especially with the 20th century logo right behind him and doing all this stuff that and whoever, whichever one of you I completely forget. Um, sorry, because my brain is, is just like the neurons in my brain are firing a million miles an hour right now. But whichever one of you that said that this was a very different version of the TVA than what we see at Loki, in Loki, I believe that was you, Damon. Um, mm-hmm. Is there a chance that another branch of the TVA has sent Deadpool to, or has sent uh, Wolverine to do kind of the same thing as Deadpool. And this is how they meet and they talk this and they're like, obviously they're going to get into a big fight. We've seen, they've, they've posted some set photos about that. We, we've all kind of seen why we're not going to talk about it for those that haven't seen it. Cause that's not official stuff, but like, we know that they get into a fight in this kind of sequence mm-hmm. right here. And obviously we see that with, you know, Wolverine stabbing him in the gut. Um, but I feel like there's a chance that this is the first time that they meet and that obviously they have no idea what's really going on here. Um, But, oh my, this is, I've I've said this so many times too, but the potential here is endless. Cause you could also convince me that this is the last time I like that. This is near the end of the movie and that they've been, they've like set each other, set against each other and whatever. So I have no idea. I'd love to hear what you guys. I have a theory. The very first time. I'll throw it to you, Damon, but I'll say that before I do, the very first time that we got wind that the TVA was going to be a part of this movie was because uh, there were reports that Owen Wilson's Mobius would be in Deadpool 3. And so that could be a reasonable thing to me of like, what if Mobius is the one that sends Ed Wolverine to help him? What do you think, Damon? So I think the TVA is definitely manipulating Wade Wilson. What, like absolutely they're manipulating him to take out a threat and that threat was just going by the name of patch so he goes to take out patch of Majapur, turns around and realize oh this is my buddy wolverine but that patch that wolverine has never met deadpool before so they somehow probably get sucked into the void because it was probably all set up in a trap and now they're all fighting each other so that's why he's like, ah, all right, buddy, come on, come help me up. And, you know, Wolverine, who has no idea who this version of Deadpool is, is probably just ready to just stab him a lot of times. I, I could like see that. that. I could see mm-hmm. that. Absolutely. I think that makes sense. Kind of a similar to what they did in What If with the Strange Supreme going, Peggy, I need your help to stop this threat. And the threat's actually Kahori. Um, And so I, I could see that one uh, coming as well. I don't mind that one bit here but um adam i'll throw it or damon actually secret wars um secret do you wars. think do you think this will be the uh first thing since loki that kind of like addresses a little bit of a secret war and maybe start setting it up a little bit i mean i'd hope so <laughs> everyone's like oh my god guys look there's a secret wars comic in this movie we're doing it and it's like yeah we know they're doing it they announced that they were doing this like two and a half years ago like this isn't new news. We know this. We know what's coming. It's just a matter of how we're going to get there. So the second that they announced, or like the second that we knew that this Deadpool movie was going to be like a big multiverse movie, we're like, yeah, this is going to be a very important movie leading up to Secret Wars. Now, does it confirm or not that like, oh, maybe the Battle World idea, like? is in the void because he kind of like maybe he's the one who comes up with this idea by reading a comic book that'd be kind of silly and fun and very deadpool so i think that's possible but yeah like you know yeah secret wars is coming yeah no shit (laughs) i think i think it's really going to be setting up just like the multiverse is dying and whether it be um maybe something like various factions are coming together of of evilness and that's one of the things that deadpool has to take out i don't know but incredible first teaser trailer um one of the highlights def- it was definitely the highlight of a boring first half of the super bowl super bowl had some very exciting moments in the second half but that trailer was definitely the uh highlight of the first half uh, before we get out of here adam were there any other parts of it that uh you wanted to cover um any other theories that you want to get out on the deadpool and wolverine trailer 
No, you know, I've just started kind of unwinding now after feeling like I was, I had elevated out of my body for the last 35 minutes of the show. Um, finally getting to, to talk about this officially, have some, some real material to parse, not just theories or set photos or anything like that. So now we, we pretty much covered everything because, you know, going 35 minutes on a, on a two minute trailer um, is, is pretty impressive on our part. So I'm, I'm proud of us, but yeah, I think we, I think we hit on pretty much everything now, of course, as soon as the show ends, I'll, I'll have about, and I, and I lose the opportunity to answer that question. I'll have about five or 10 theories pop into my head, but you know, then we'll talk about that the next time that we talk about Deadpool three. So I'm sure as soon as uh, Adam's finished cranking out his uh, recaps for the bad batch, there's probably going to be some Deadpool content coming uh, from <laughs> coming from him up on agents, in the future. And if you're looking for some more Damon, uh, to check out the Comic Corner podcast where he talks with some of the greatest artists and writers in all of the comic industry with some great guests from the industry as well and many fellow agents of fandom including co-host AF some great comic talk over there that'll be hitting the agents of fandom podcast feed soon and you can also catch Damon later this week on the agents of fandom podcast talking about Avatar the last airbender for our primer for the new series coming to Netflix next week. Make sure so you don't miss out. You are uh, following the Agents of Fandom on socials. Agents of Agents Fandom on TikTok and Twitter. Agents of Fandom everywhere else. And if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And also subscribe to the Agents of Fandom wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a little five-star rating. Write a nice review if it's on Apple Podcasts. All of these things help us so much. And of course, smash that like button on YouTube because it does wonders for the videos. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. That'll do it for this edition of the Agents of Adam podcast. And we will see you later in the week covering Avatar The Last Airbender. And of course, going into next week as well with lots of great Star Wars, Avatar, and more Marvel content coming. Thank you, for everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.